You may have seen this clip floating around TikTok, on Twitter, or even the cesspool that is Instagram Reels. It is from an anime that just started airing in October of this year and has been one of the funniest anime I watched this year. This may look like your typical slapstick comedy anime with the weird boys love subplot to it, but it is so much more than that. Today, we are going to be diving into the world of Miggy and Dolly. We are greeted with a shot of a blonde woman laying on the floor seemingly bleeding out holding a button with the famous piece Claire de Lune playing as our first look into this world. It is December 1989 where we see an elderly couple visiting an orphanage to adopt a child to bring home with them to the wealthy village of Oregon. Not Oregon, like the US state, but Oregon. A village that looks like every Hallmark movie small town where the big city girl discovers her love for the suburbs. As they are leaving the orphanage, the Mrs. Hat blows away into the hand of a young blonde boy with piercing blue eyes and a Steve Jobs turtle neck. The Mrs. is instantly infatuated with this boy and tells him to hold on for it as she will come back for it tomorrow. Now about to leave, the elderly couple are suddenly caught in a massive downpour of rain when they see none other than the blonde boy heroically keeping a dog dry at the expense of his own well-being. At this moment, the Mr. is also convinced that this is the child they are bringing home. Fast forward to February 1990, we can see that the boy has been adopted by the elderly couple and is preparing his room with his new parents. The boy is given the name Hitori, and he already appears to be the perfect child for this couple. The three of them begin to unpack Hitori's belongings when the father notices a big ass box in the room which can't be right because an orphan shouldn't have that much stuff. As he gets ready to open it, Hitori interrupts asking to decorate his room by himself. As his new parents leave to make dinner, we get the reveal that the box is holding another boy who is identical to the child that was just adopted by the elderly couple. They then decorate the room quickly working together as one unit when the father comes into the room to say that dinner is ready. When he opens the door, only one of the boys is seen, but it is revealed that the other boy pulled the oldest trick in the book, hiding behind the door. It is from this point where the absurdity of things happening gets so out of hand that it actually becomes hilarious. The happy family is enjoying a nice meal when the mother asks what kind of clothes Hitori wants. But hold on, before we continue on, did you notice something? In that last shot, we can actually see the other boy hiding behind the plant in the other room. I bet you didn't see it. Like I was saying, the mother is asking for what kind of clothes Hitori wants and Hitori responds that he wants two sets of clothes exactly like the ones he is wearing now. The mother exclaims, Eh, <laughs> I made that joke too. But Hitori says that he feels most comfortable in the Steve Jobs fit. The boy sitting at the table signals to the other boy to do something. Soon after, we see the other boy crawl under the table in a weird insect-like way. Here we get some talk about the jambalaya and to make his new mom feel better he offers to eat even more food than he already has. Unfortunately, Hitori is stuffed like a turkey and is beginning to make the switcheroo under the table with the other boy. As the parents are closing their eyes getting a new blade of jambalaya, the two boys do an acrobatic conveyor belt move to bring one boy under the table and the other boy on top before anyone has time to see a thing. He then starts to scarf down the jambalaya. After dinner is over, Hitori is tasked with massaging his father's shoulders but the father thinks the massaging is pretty mid and asks him to stop. But determined, the boy starts again with the other boy helping him as well, all in the father's blind spot. The boys are so perfectly in sync that the father cries tears of joy from how good it feels. As the night falls, we learn that the boys' names are Miggy and Dolly and they are planning to proceed with caution, as one person. The boys are seen making a map of some sort bar interrupted by the sun rising. During breakfast, we see Miggy take over Hitori while Dolly is under the table eating. After breakfast, the mother and father are discussing things they want to do with Hitori like baking a cherry pie or riding on his dad's shoulders. Luckily for them, Hitori overhears this and proceeds to take action. Hitori finds a book where a mouse eats a cherry pie and is hinting at his mother how badly he wants a cherry pie. The mother is overjoyed and they begin to make a cherry pie in the kitchen. As they are making it, the mother quizzes Hitori on the instructions, where he gives back the instructions perfectly. It is real that Dolly is actually reading out loud the instructions from a notepad while Miggy is mouthing out the words in sync with his brother. The mother begins to braid the pie crust but actually doesn't know how to do it. Shit! Oh, hi hi! Imaikimasu! As the mother gets to the door, Miggy and Dolly braid the pie perfectly together before the mother is even back from the door. During this time, we see that the father is jealous of the mother fulfilling her dream of baking a cherry pie with her child. Dolly notices this and plots to fulfill his dream as well. Hitori is outside trying to put a birdhouse up when the father sees him struggling. The father sees this as a perfect opportunity to put Hitori on his shoulders and fulfill his dream of being a dad with his son on his shoulders. The father picks up Hitori on his shoulders and gets ready to push him up. <laughs> Yeah, 
Hitori weighs way too much for an old guy like him to lift him up on his shoulders. The next day, Miggy and Dolly have a plan to lift Hitori up without breaking their dad's back. This time, Miggy is on the tree with the rope while Dolly is also tied to this rope. As her father launches Hitori up to the sky, Miggy drops from the tree, hoisting Dolly up, relieving all pressure from their father's body. To stop from getting revealed, Miggy covers their dad's eyes by saying he's scared of heights. At the end of the episode, we get a big reveal. While overhearing another kid at the orphanage, Miggy and Dolly plotted the entire time to swim their new parents' hearts. We see Hitori wearing the button we saw at the beginning of the episode. We replayed the beginning of the episode with a different angle. The wind that blew the Mrs. Hat away is actually Dolly grabbing it with the fish hook into Miggy's hands. The rain that poured over the couple's car was actually just hose water, and the dog Hitori was sheltering was actually just a trash stuffed animal with eight legs. This anime series was such a fun series to go through and was made by the same mangaka who made Haven't You Heard, I'm Sakamoto. The name of this mangaka is Nami Sano and her style of comedy and art style is so distinct that you probably figured this out a while ago. I absolutely love Nami Sano's works and I know many people have already seen Haven't You Heard, I'm Sakamoto and should give Miggy and Dolly a shot. This first episode is just a glimpse into the wonderful world and there is so much more to this story that develops from the second episode and onward. The story is actually a mystery surreal comedy and you begin to see the mystery part become a huge part of the story after this episode. Unfortunately, Nami Sana was diagnosed with cancer July of this year and passed away only a month later on August 5th at the young age of 36 years old. Sadly, she wasn't able to see her manga Miggy and Dolly premiere but was lucky enough to be a part of the anime's production. After learning about this, I was so heartbroken learning that someone so talented and gifted in storytelling passed away, and so suddenly, especially after only getting diagnosed one month prior. With that being said, Miggy and Dolly was their final project before passing, and I would strongly encourage you guys to go and watch it. One of Nami Sana's last words written in a letter goes as follows. This ended up being a fun life. I am now going to a more free world. Goodbye. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you guys have a great 2024. I recorded this in 2023 so I'm not sure if this came up before or after New Year's. Leave a comment if you enjoyed the video or have something you want to say about the great Nami Sano. Like the video as it really helps with the algorithm and subscribe if you want more content similar to this one. With that being said, thank you and I'll see you guys later.